Hey guys, on today's video, we're going to be installing your external XSD or external hard drive to your Mac. It doesn't matter which brand of SSD or external hard drive you have, it's just a brand. So just keep that in mind when we're installing this. Now, the way that we're going to install this is using this utility, and we are going to avoid all software that comes pre installed with your SSD or external hard drive. And that's because we want to avoid any problems that comes with using those programs. Because at the end of the day, what you have to think about is your external hard drive or SSD that you have to back up your files is just one big USB drive. So I'll show you different ways that you can back up your stuff from your Mac. We're gonna start off with the easiest to a little bit more advanced. All right, so obviously the first thing is to plug in your external hard drive or SSD to your Mac. Now, I also wanna note that all external hard drives and SSD are actually compatible with Mac and we can make them compatible. We can make them work really easy. So right now on my desktop, I can see this popping up and that's my external hard drive. That's just because I just hooked it up right now. However, if you don't see this, so whether this is an external hard drive, USB stick or anything, SD card, if you don't see any icons popping up, all you have to go is into your finder. So first of all, just open up your finder or just click on your background. So your desktop, just click on the background, it's gonna go to your finder. So on the top left hand side of my screen, I should see the word finder. Once you click on finder, go ahead and select the second option, preferences. And from preferences, you're gonna see your sidebar. So that's our third option. Just go down a little bit and you're gonna see locations. So see this right here where it says external disks. Just make sure you have a check mark right there. So as long as you have a check mark there, once you open up Finder, so down here's Finder, open it up. I'm gonna see locations, easy store. That's just the name of my external hard drive at this point. I can change that up and I will change that up in a minute. Now, remember I told you that you should just avoid anything that comes with this thing. It, these are programs that are gonna get in your way, avoid them. So this one's for windows.exe, DMG is for your Mac avoid those. If you change your mind later on, which you won't, you can download these two for free from their website regardless. So that's how I can make sure I'm looking at my external hard drive in my finder. But obviously we don't just want to see it in finder. We want to see it as an icon like you saw it on the side. So again, just go into your finder, go into preferences where we were. And this time, instead of selecting sidebar, select the first one where it says general. Right here, just have this check mark for external disks. And that means it's going to show up on here, your desktop. So let me just zoom in a little bit here. So if I take off this check mark, it's gonna go away. If I put on the check mark, I should see it there. Anyways, it's not a big deal, even if you're doing this and it's not showing up there, we're gonna set it up right now. So what you need to look for is this utility. It's something that's already installed on your Mac. And the way that we can look for it is up here on the top right hand corner, you're gonna see this spotlight search and just type in this utility. So here we go. It should be your first option. Open it up. Here's my disk utility. This is where the magic takes place. We're gonna erase and delete everything from within the external hard drive. And that's because we wanna set it up. We want it to work properly with the Mac. And I'm gonna teach you how to make this work with Mac and PC, only for your Mac and just other ways. But anyways, let's just get started. So first of all, maybe you guys don't even see this on the side. Well, up here, you're gonna see this. Just select show all devices. So that means you shouldn't have this on or even this hide sidebar, don't have that on. Just going to show all devices because you want to see everything. And what you don't want to touch is the first part. So anything that says internal, you don't want to touch. So let's just make sure we don't touch this. It's external. So anything that's external, that's us. Once again, this could say another name for you guys. It does not matter. It could be Seagate, it could be any other brand. That depends on the name and it doesn't matter because we can rename it to whatever you would like and I suggest renaming it. And once again, once we go ahead and erase this, it means we're gonna delete everything from within the external hard drive or the external SSD. Obviously at this point it doesn't matter because it's brand new and we're gonna set it up the proper way. So let's just click on the first option here. So here we go. So what we wanna do is go ahead and erase this. So it's gonna be a tab up here. It's gonna be the fourth one, erase. And what that's gonna do again, it's gonna literally delete everything from within the external hard drive or external SSD. So let's just tap there. So if you have an external SSD, you wanna choose usually APFS. Then you can go ahead and rename this to whatever you would like. You can just name it backup. And from here, I would suggest keeping this partition map. Don't do any of these other ones. Just go into simple partition map. I also want to highlight that the security options, 
Now, once you go into security options, let me just tap there. This is just in case you want to sell your external hard drive. So if you want to sell it to somebody else and you want to erase everything from within it, well, delete everything, then you want this to be the most secure. And it's going to take maybe even days to erase everything from within it. If you do the fastest, then it's just really quick to erase it. They could technically recover that information if you just do that. So again, if you're watching this because you're trying to erase your external hard drive, then what you want to do is maybe hit the middle-ish or maybe this. I would do this line, which is not the most secure, but it's secure. And that way, it, maybe it's just going to take a few hours. But if you just do fastest, it's going to take a few minutes, two seconds. Anyway, since we're setting up this brand new, we don't really have to worry about this. We're just going to leave it as is. So at this point, if we want to keep this really simple, I can just go ahead and erase it. And I will, just to show you what this does. So if you're choosing to do this, APFS, yes, you can read it with your window. So if you have a laptop or a desktop that's Windows, it could read it, but you need programs. It's not the best thing to use this. This is just if you want to use it just for Macs. I'm going to click OK right now because we're pretty much done. At this point, it should show up in Finder, but we should also see something like this. And it's name backup. I can double click on it. Then it's going to open up. And right here, I can drag and drop anything to here. So this is the most simple way that you can use your external hard drive. Just to drop and drag your stuff right here. Copy anything, any files. So if you have a lot of files that are taking up space on your Mac, and all you want to do is just move them to your external hard drive so you can just keep going and not have that stuff getting in your way, then I would just do this. I would just format it like right now. So I could literally take any file that I have and copy and paste it here or just drop and drag it to this area. So for example, I have this video here. This could be any type of document. It could be a folder. Like, let me just make a folder right now. I can go ahead, drop and drag, drop and drag. That's going to take a little bit to copy and paste since it's a video or I can copy and paste. So let me just rename this folder to whatever. And I can press command C, command V on top of this, and it's going to paste it on. Plus, if you want to go really old school, you can go ahead. Let me just do that with this folder, just as an example. I'm going to right click on it. I can go ahead and copy it. So I'm going to select copy. Let me just zoom in so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So I right clicked on the folder. Now, this could be any type of file. It doesn't matter. It could be a Word file, Excel, anything, picture, copy. I'll go right here. Just click anywhere, really. But I'm going to do a right click and then go ahead and paste item. It's going to paste that folder. And there we go. So that's how you could take your files from your Mac and put them right here. Then I could just delete them from here. No problem. So I can go ahead and delete this because it's already an external hard drive. Now, keep in mind that that means that you technically only have one copy. That one copy is in your external hard drive. So I wouldn't really call that a backup. I don't even know what to call that. It's just one file that's in external hard drive. There's no backup of it you would technically need another external hard drive to make a real backup. But anyways, I hope that made sense. Now to erase anything from here, delete any files from an external hard drive. Well, we can just highlight them and we can press Command Delete. We can also right click and we can move to trash. That's an option. Then we can just empty our trash. We always need to empty our trash before ejecting our external hard drive. So make sure to do that, by the way. And here we go. So you should see something like this, empty trash, and that way it's completely gone from there. But anyways, that would be for an external SSD. Now let me show you for an external hard drive, if you've got an external hard drive. So we're going to do that format next. Let me just close this up, go back to disk utility, and let's just go for that option. So for an external hard drive, you just go into Erase. And this time we're going to choose Mac OS Extended Journaled. Now if you choose this, this is really good if you want Time Machine, plus if you just want to use it like the way I, we just used it, you can just copy and paste stuff to it. You could do that. And we can just leave it as Mac OS Extended Journal. That's just going to work for Macs. So if you don't care about PCs, you don't really want to deal with that stuff, just choose this, go ahead, erase, and you're good to go. However, if you want this to work with Mac and PC, then you want to go with XFAT, your last option. So that's this last option. This will work with Windows and Mac. So I can go ahead and choose that. I can name this whatever I like, Erase. 
And then I can do exactly what I just showed you a couple seconds ago, the exact same thing, copy and paste stuff into it without any problem. So that's the most simple form of using your external hard drive, using it like a big USB drive where you just copy files over and just delete them from your Mac. However, if you wanna use Time Machine, which is something that's pre-built into your Mac, and what Time Machine does is backs up everything. It does an actual backup of everything from your Mac, your programs, your files, everything, pictures, videos, then what I would personally recommend is splitting up your external hard drive. So I'm gonna teach you what that means and how you can get the most out of your external hard drive or SSD. So as always, we're gonna choose this option, just make sure it's partitioned, and then we're gonna just select journaled. Don't worry, we're gonna go into XFAT as well. And before I keep going, I do wanna mention that if you guys don't wanna bother with Time Machine, you're pretty much done with the tutorial and you're good to go if you just wanna end it right now. You don't have to watch this part. It's just a little bit more advanced for those of you who just wanna make your lives a lot easier to back up all your files from your Mac to your external hard drive. So again, we're just gonna start up with journaled partition map and we're just gonna name this, well, it doesn't really matter at this point. We're just gonna name it Mac and that's it. We are gonna just erase it. Erasing, by the way, it doesn't take that long. If you get any errors, just try again, make sure it's partitioned, journaled, especially if you're trying to do anything like XFAT, sometimes you get errors, don't worry about it, just try it again, you should be okay. But usually you get only errors when you're doing this if a program's trying to use your external hard drive for something. So right now we're done with this, let's just press okay. Then up here, we're gonna go into partition. So this is our second option. So partitioning is really cool because you're kind of making your external hard drive to be more external hard drives. You're dividing it into parts so you can use each part for what specific things you want. So if it's a really big external hard drive such as this one, 18 terabytes, it's quite big, 18,000 gigs. Well, you want to most likely partition it. So first of all, see this plus sign down, down here below? Just press on it. We're gonna press on it twice. So that way it divides external hard drive into three parts. Do not touch this. See where this says size? Don't touch that. If you wanna change the size and how much space you're giving each part, just move these things around. See these circles? Yeah, just move them around. So you can just click on it, hold, and then move this around to give whatever part of the external hard drive more space. So in this case, I'm gonna, let's say, and this might what I suggest doing, I'm gonna leave the biggest part, so when I click on my biggest part, I'm gonna make sure it's journaled. I'm gonna name it Time Machine actually, because this is what I want. And this is what I suggest you guys doing too. So Time Machine, again, it's gonna back up our entire Mac. It's awesome. I do have a video that explains everything about Time Machine. Anyways, we just did this, Time Machine, Mac OS extended. Let's just click on another part. So this part right here, I'm gonna actually make this part that I called Mac, I'm gonna call it Windows. And that's because this part, I'm gonna make it compatible with Windows. So I'm gonna choose XFAT. And then we have one last portion, which is this one right here. So I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna choose this one to say Mac Backup. And I'm gonna choose Journal because this is just for Mac. Now for those of you using SSD, yes, you want APFS and external hard drives going to journaled. By the way, an SSD, you can also choose journaled. It's no problem, it's gonna work just fine, but it's recommended to use APFS because it works a little bit better. Again, that's if you have an SSD. Right now, we're just gonna leave it as journaled. We can actually click on any other part just to make sure everything's good. So everything has been applied. It automatically applies as long as you click somewhere else. So as long as I click on another volume, there we go. So right now it's split up into three parts. And so this makes sense. I have to go ahead and apply it to show you what I'm doing and what's happening. So let's just apply it. And then this is a good thing that it's giving you a warning. So, because that's exactly what we're doing. We're erasing everything from within the external hard drive. So any data that's inside of it, whether there's files or anything, we're gonna delete those things, which again, it's a setup video, so it doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and tap on partition. So here we go. It's gonna partition. So it's gonna split up our external hard drive in three parts. And I'm gonna teach you how to set up Time Machine plus explain the other parts and why I made them. So there we go. Finally, it has done what it needs to do. Click on done. And here are my th three partitions. 
And the biggest one is my time machine. Mac backup's pretty big and Windows, I left it pretty small. What does that mean? Well, you're gonna see what that means here on the side. Remember these guys? I used to have only one. Right now it shows as three separate external hard drives. Although it's just one, here are the three partitions. So let me just explain really quick why I made three. Well, Windows, if I open it up, I'm gonna transfer any files that I want to transfer between any Windows laptop and my Mac in here. So again, I'm just using this part of it just to transfer files between my Mac and a PC. Now Time Machine, the other hand, we're gonna set that up in just a second, so I'm gonna show you what that is. And Mac Backup, well, that's where I'm gonna throw any files that I want to keep forever and get rid of them from my Mac. So if there's any big videos or something or a bunch of files that are taking up too much space on my Mac, I would just throw them in here, delete them from my Mac, I'm good to go. But hey, if you're running out of storage, you gotta do what you gotta do. And now let's take a look at Time Machine. So let's go back into this utility. We're gonna close it off. And I want you guys to look for system preferences. So this is how system preferences looks like. And if you can't find it down there on the top left hand side of your screen, you're gonna see that Apple logo. Click on it. Second option, system preferences. Under system preferences, you're gonna notice on the bottom, it's gonna say time machine. So yes, it's something pre-built into your Mac and it's awesome. So let's just click on it. And this is something that you guys might not see on your Mac. Well, actually, you won't see on your Mac because you don't have time machine set up. I already have one time machine set up with another external hard drive and that's why I have it here. However, what we want is to select a new disk and that's all you guys are gonna see, just select disk. So go ahead, click on select disk. We're gonna choose from available disks. So in this case, we have the one that we named Time Machine. So we're gonna click on there, then click on use disk. And this is something that you will not see because I have another Time Machine set up. So I can go ahead and use both. It's gonna prepare my Time Machine. And then down here, while that's preparing, I wanna show you two more check marks that you should have. Put on this check mark to show Time Machine in menu bar and I suggest making your backups automatically. So put a check mark there as well. So right now you should be able to see your time machine right here. So what does time machine do? Well, actually I'm gonna take off the check mark for backup automatically. I don't want that to do that right now. But basically what time machine does, it backs up the entire files. So it's gonna back up all my files from today. And let's say tomorrow I delete a certain file I can go back in Time Machine and retrieve that file. However, once Time Machine becomes too full, so let's say I took up those 10 terabytes that I have of Time Machine, there's no more space in Time Machine, it's actually gonna start deleting old backups and making, that way it has enough space to make new backups. So that's how Time Machine works because it makes a backup every single day of all your files. So even files that you made today, if you made a Time Machine backup today, it will back those up and let's say tomorrow you delete them, you could actually retrieve them from Time Machine because you already backed them up. And that's why what Time Machine needs to do once it gets too full is delete old backups. And that's why I told you guys to make this other partition where it says Mac Backup and just drag and drop any files that you want to keep forever in there. And why you may want Time Machine is actually to keep a backup, a constant backup of your Mac. Just in case it ever crashes on you or anything like that, you could literally take your external hard drive, hook it up to a brand new Mac and transfer all your information and everything's gonna be just as it was on your old Mac. So I'm talking about software, everything, even your background, your desktop, how it looked like, your layout, the way that you organize your files in Finder, everything basically will be backed up in Time Machine. So that's why I personally suggest to always, always set up Time Machine. But of course you don't have to, you can just go the easy way and just drag and drop whatever files you need into your Mac backup. But if you also want a backup of all your apps from your Mac and everything else, without you having to drag and drop anything, then just set up Time Machine as well. Quick note, don't worry if your Time Machine disk does not look like this. It could be another color. It could stay yellow like the other ones. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have it added here, then you're good to go. And remember I told you to add this show time machine menu bar? Well, that means that your time machine is all the way up here. So let me just scroll, click on it. I can see my latest time machine backup and I can click on backup now. 
So if you guys want to back this up right now, go ahead and click on it and then just let it run throughout the night if you have a lot of files. Anyways, hopefully this video made sense for you guys. And again, don't overthink your external hard drive. Just think of it as a big, big USB drive where you can just drag and drop files into it. And if you follow this video, you'll avoid any problems that you will have if you use the software that comes pre-built into your external hard drive or SSD. Anyways, as far as this video goes, we're all done. If you guys have any comments, questions, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and rate. Thank you.